stay in the presence of God, knowing that God cherishes our coming to Him to fellowship. And so in the garden today, we believe that the Holy Spirit is in our midst and is here to do a loving work of grace in our hearts and to those who are watching. It's a good day to be in the presence of the Lord. So shall we come to the Lord in prayer as we start? Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise your holy name that you are the God who delights to be with his people. The God who always shows himself strong on behalf of his people. The God who loves us so faithfully and reaches out to us even when we find it possible, impossible to draw near to you. Thank you, Lord, for it is by your grace that we can rise above any hurdle in our lives and come to you as your spirit draws us to yourself. We thank you that where two or three gather in your name, you are in your name. So we thank you for your presence in our midst today as we continue to share fellowship with one another and also with your Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We give you praise and glory for all that you are doing and you continue to do for us in accordance to your will and purpose for us. So we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we thank God as we continue to fellowship in His presence and we continue in the series we began uh, some time back, the gifts of God. Now, um, since Pentecost, we've been looking at the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. We've looked at His person, His role in creation, uh, the incarnation, the regeneration of uh, the sinner, and also lately we've been looking at His formation, uh, His formation work in the believer. In other words, what he's doing. And last week we defined the meaning of formation, which we said it is the act or process of forming or the state of being formed, the manner in which a thing is formed or shaped or structured to bring it to that perfect end, that end product, which is the work of God. And we also saw in Ephesians 2 and verse 10, which said, For we are his workmanship, created in the image of Christ Jesus to do good works, which he, before the foundation of the world, uh, placed them for us to do. And so today we continue um, in that same vein and we look at uh, what the Holy Spirit continues to do until uh, Jesus returns or until we are called home. The Christian life, we know, is not lived in vacuum. It is lived in grace in the real world. And um, in John 16, 33, in the Passion Translation, it says, And everything I have taught you is so that the peace in which the peace which is mine will be in you and will give you great confidence as you rest in me. For in this unbelieving world, you will experience trouble and sorrows, but you must be courageous. Cheer up, for I have conquered the world. And these are the words of Jesus Christ. Now we live in the real world where we experience sorrow, we experience uh, troubles, we experience all kinds of things, things we don't bargain for, we get them, and things we don't expect come to us. So um, Jesus told us beforehand that in this world we will have tribulations, we will have troubles, we will have all kinds of sorrow, but again he says, but be of good cheer, for I have conquered the world, I have overcome the world. Jesus has taken away the power this world has to defeat us and has conquered it for us. And that's a big, big, big amen to that. In, in, in his glorious power, 
he has defeated uh, the powers of darkness for us to be able to walk uh, in a life that is uh, uh, steered by the Holy Spirit, bringing us into a victorious Christian living. Now, peace is not um, something that we orchestrate. Yes, we can live in peace towards one another, but when we talk about peace, I mean, recently I saw um, a post on WhatsApp where uh, the bishop was talking about one world religion which will bring peace. And I also heard of a, a very respectable evangelical preacher who is steering, spearheading uh, this kind of uh, world, one world religion to bring peace because he says politicians have failed and he believes that God has raised him to spearhead uh, this one world religion to bring peace. I don't believe in that one world religion because Jesus instead says he is our peace and the peace of God which passes all understanding is the promise of God. So uh, no one world religion will bring peace. Uh, the peace that we need is the peace which Jesus Christ himself gives. He is our peace and he is our uh, 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 everlasting uh, rest as it were. So peace is resting in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again in Psalm 34 and verse 19, uh, reading in the contemporary English version, it says the Lord's people may suffer a lot, but he will always bring them safely through. So these are the things which uh, uh, as God's people, not just God's people, but they are in this world. There are troubles, there are all sorts of things that militate against us as, as a people. Um, whether you are a Christian or not, you are not immune from troubles, you are not immune from the harsh realities of what this world throws uh, at, at us. And so uh, we, we are forewarned, and as it's the same goes, for one is for arm. So we've been for one. Jesus said that in this world you will have tribulations. Um, but, but be of good cheer. Get yourself together because I have overcome the world. And we, we must be grateful to God for what is done uh, through Jesus Christ. That as we come to Him, the Spirit of God empowers us. We are not on our own. Amen to that. We have the Spirit. Jesus says, I don't leave you as often. These are his words uh, before he left his, his disciples. I don't leave you as often, but I will go and I will, I will send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the, 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 your Helper, uh, the Paraclete, the one who will come alongside you to strengthen you. So yes! There are hard times in our world today. There are things that we have not wished upon ourselves, but they come in a way. That there are things that we ourselves, by our reckless lifestyle, have contributed to, the, to some suffering that we uh, encounter. But innocently, we, 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 we encounter things that we have not thought about or contributed to but these things have happened to us. But we are grateful to God that we are not on our own. So the Holy, the Holy Spirit in all his works of grace and of power is there on the inside of us. He walks with us, he talks with us along life's narrow way he lives. To impart the grace of God. So we thank God that the Holy Spirit, yes, is with us and He is doing that loving work of grace in our lives. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 to 13, again it reads Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. Here's another warning to us. 
that the fact that we are Christians does not mean us or does not literally take us out of these uh, painful trials that come our way and the suffering. Peter says we shouldn't be surprised as though uh, what is happening to us is new. No, it's not. There are things that will happen in a way. But we thank God for the work of the Holy Spirit who is in this struggle with us. The, the, the Bible is awash with so many uh, issues, so many uh, real experiences of people, God's people, who have gone through so many things and, and we've been told not to be surprised when these things happen because they will happen, whether we like it or not, they will happen. Yes, in the kingdom of God, as kingdom people, yes, we will go through these things. But Apostle Paul offers a very uh, balanced view to what comes against us uh, in the kingdom, as, king, as, as God's people, as kingdom people. And this is what he says. I mean, the Apostle Paul teaches that there is joy, there is peace in the kingdom of God. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 17, it says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness. The kingdom of God has the traits and the reality of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So yes, we'll be going through these struggles. We'll be going through these trials. We'll be going through this uh, phase of persecution. And oh, for us in the, in the Western world, we haven't seen anything at all like persecution. There is, there is no pain at all uh, for us here in the West. We haven't seen or experienced anything. I mean, I read uh, some time back where uh, Christians in, in Eritrea uh, are kept in the desert in containers. They are only, only thing they've done, they are seen in the eyes of the world is believing in Jesus Christ. And for that they are kept in containers, hot in the desert. And it's very cold at night. So your sisters and brothers, my sisters and brothers, in, in some parts of the world are going through harsh persecutions for the name of Jesus Christ. And, and it seems like there's, there's, a, there's a tension here, there's, there's conflict. But, but the Apostle Paul offers a very a balanced view of that. He says, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness. So in the midst of all these, uh, uh, God's people are called upon to exhibit a life of righteousness and it's also filled with peace and it is not the peace that which the, uh, the world gives. That is what Jesus says. He says, the peace that I give you is the peace which the world cannot give you. And the kingdom of God is filled with peace, righteousness and joy in the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the one who works in us to win and to do of the good pleasure of our God. A righteous lifestyle is aided by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the peace which passes all understanding is the peace which this world cannot give. The joy that springs from us is the joy that is stirred up by the Holy Spirit. And the Apostle Paul says it is also power for the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power in the name of Jesus. There is triumph in the midst of all these. God is at work in the life of his people. God is at work in the person of the Holy Spirit. And is working out this power of God in the Holy Spirit. It is a, 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 a present authority to 
cause the believer to triumph over evil. Amen. I cannot triumph over evil in my own strength. But I can triumph. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is what 2 Timothy 4, 18 says. We triumph because Jesus in his death and resurrection procured, procured for us this triumphant living. And indeed the Christian life represents triumphalism because Jesus died, he was buried, he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and he's coming back again. Hallelujah. Praise God. And in Romans 16, 20, he drive the final nail into all of these when the Apostle Paul says, <clears throat> and the God of peace who crushed Satan under your feet shortly grace of our Lord be with you. And so yes, in all of this, in the pain, in, 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 the, in the struggles, in the persecutions, in the tribulations, and in the suffering and sorrow and everything that come against us, the God of peace will crush Satan under our feet. That is what his word says. In the afflictions and sorrow and the pain, God, in due time, in due season, when it will be best for us, the righteous kingdom people, to be delivered, it comes like a flood. Hallelujah. So you see, um, sometimes we pray. And yes, God breaks through instantly. But there are times that God comes to us in his own time when he deems it fit to come. And I bet you, when he comes in that moment, in his time, we realize that things are different. We can clearly trace it and say, yeah, this is the work of God in my life. So God is at work in us and he is doing that loving work of grace. So the call on us to take courage is appropriate when Jesus says, be of good courage. Jesus Christ is not being passive. No, but he has always known the end from the beginning. And so when he says that in this world you will have trouble, in, in, in this in this setup, you have trouble, you have tribulation. He said, be of good cheer. Take courage. Take courage. Take courage. And, and, that, and that enjoyment and that, 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 that uh, way of advice to us is appropriate. Because as we wait, there is the, the, the coming, the rising of confidence in us to wait on God because we choose to take courage, we choose to trust, we choose to say, yes, God, here I am in the midst of this hardship, in the midst of this trial, but my hope is in you. And you see, as we continue to wait, God, in his way, and in his, in his infinite wisdom supports the righteous going through this, this triad and brings deliverance to him and to her or him or her. God has not forsaken us. He has won us in time already. Um, if you are a Christian, you don't go through triads, then I say to you, you are an angel. Because the angels of God, the holy angels of God, don't go through trials, but we go through trials as real human beings. So sufferings and trials and pain is with us. I'm the only male son in my family with six sisters. Now two of them 
uh, have special needs. And I've sat down growing up, listening to my mom in, in her pain, you know, recount the, 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 the trials and the hardships she went through as a young woman. Her first child has a special need. The second child also a special need. And the third one passing away. That was crushing to my dear mother. But she said, son, I've always learned to rise up in the midst of all this. And I thank God that he is not left her to herself. Yes, we will go through things, but we thank God that he comes through to us. In Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 11, it says, He has made all things beautiful in his time. Because God is at work in us. The Holy Spirit is working beautifully in us. And he is working at the purpose of God. My submission is day to you of the work of the Holy Spirit. His work of formation in us also plays a crucial role as we live this life. And again I say that the Christian life is not lived in vacuum. We, we are in this world. This, this is what we are. We are not in heaven yet. We are in this world. We are still alive. And so long as we are alive, we will be met by so many things. Sickness, illness, and all sorts of things. Things you don't bargain for, they come. The things you are praying and asking for, um, you're still doing the same thing. It's not, it's not happening yet. But he has made all things beautiful in his time. Folks, I am a firm believer because that is what scripture says. Be of good courage. Take courage. Trust in the Lord. And God will support you under the trials and bring deliverance at the appointed time. This is something to take in. Yes, we'll go through all these things, but God is with us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that, yes, I will send you the helper, the comforter, who will be in you. So we know that the Holy Spirit has taken residence in us as believers. The moment that great transaction took place in your life as a, as, a, as a child of God, the Holy Spirit made his home in you. Amen. And be in you. He will guide you into all truth. He will be your helper. And so come what may, whatever the trial, whatever the circumstance, whatever the tribulations, whatever the burden, we know that the Holy Spirit is there and he will see us through. What we have to realize is we've been called to live a life to the glory of God and the Holy Spirit will help us. He will strengthen us under the yoke of that trial, of that pain, of that persecution. Oh, God will bring deliverance. And we know that our sisters and brothers who are in parts of our world going through tribulations, going through hard times, trouble, going through sorrow, tribulation is trouble, it's, it's hard time, it's difficult times. And God says we should be of good cheer because He has overcome the world. And so for us, we need to continue to trust Him because in the fullness of time, He will come to us and he will deliver us. Many are the afflictions, many are the troubles, many are the, the things that militate against us. But according to Psalm 34 verse 19, he, our God, in the person of the Holy Spirit, will bring us safely through them. So there's an assurance of God bringing us safely through whatever uh, we might be going through. I don't know what your situation is today. I don't know the kind of trial you are going through or the difficult time you are going through. 
I don't know, maybe you have contributed to some of that. Maybe you are, you are innocent. You've done nothing at all to bring peace on you. I don't know, whatever it is, I say to you, as a child of God, take God at his word when Jesus says, be of good courage. Trust in me. Muster every strength in you to hold on to the promises of God. Because the promises of God are yes and they are amen in Christ Jesus. And he will see you through whatever the situation. I believe that God is able to bring you through. I just want to challenge us today to hand over whatever we're going through to him because he is able and he will bring us safely through whatever we are going through because the Spirit of God is at work and he will bring to pass that which is the will and purpose of God. My message is simple. And no matter what we go through, the God of all grace and of all comfort will comfort us and he will see us through. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that your word is true. Lord, we hear of Christians being persecuted. Lord, in our own very lives, Lord, we bear testimony of hard times, of difficult times that we encounter. Some would say it's very light. Some would say it is heavy. And in some cases, we will say, God, I cannot bear this anymore. But whatever the suffering is, whatever the pain is, whatever the sorrows are, we thank you that you have spoken into them when you said, be of good courage. Be of good cheer. Take courage. Anchor in me. Let your confidence take root in me because I have overcome the world. Lord, we thank you because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Help us, Lord, to get right focus on what we go through, knowing that you have said you will never leave us nor forsake us. Today, Lord, for those hearing, Lord, I pray if there is any brother or sister or any person going through the burden of some sorrow of some sort, going through hard times. Lord, may that brother or sister, that man or woman, find grace to help in time of their need. You are that gracious God. Pray, O oh God, that your spirit who works in us will reach out in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, for that man or woman listening but has no relationship with you but has found the need to act to move, Spirit of God, grant that grace and lift that man or woman from where they are to where they belong. As you give grace and direction in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and glory for you are God and in you
you we have taken refuge. And you are our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in time of trouble. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy. Give glory to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.